All right, we got a nice evening here. I'm gonna go check my 54 if there's some air in the tires. We're gonna fire up the tractor. We're gonna hook a chain to the back, try to drag it over a bit, and then snake it over here and we'll pop her in the shop. Well, mind you, I throw those tires off and stuff like that, but a little bit of cleanup. Clean up's much faster in this shop because there's not much room. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, let's get started. Let's see where where we're at with this car and where we gotta go yet. All right, survey says, well, the clip looks more or less in. I don't think I made a tranny cross member. Maybe I was gonna modify the stock brakes. Maybe, possibly. What else we got going on? No, it looked like I still had some more work to do at the front end here yet. So we've cut the oil pan. I think the motor needs to go back. Oh, it might be fine depending how I make the mounts. So we've got a stall in here. Cool. I know it's a Turbo 400. I just don't know what I all got going on. Nothing by the looks of it. In the back. So we probably lowered it as much as I'm lowering the car. So yeah, that's all right. We got blocks with that. I don't think I zapped anything on either. Nope. No pinion angle set, nothing. I'm sure this is a Camaro diff, which was gonna be probably a posi, but I don't have any of that stuff anymore because it was located in the shop. <laughs> oh man. All right. How's this side? Looks a lot the same. A lot the same. Oh. Man, they got some parts. Look at that. Uh, these are really weird looking, so maybe they're the Jaguar stuff. Looks like front brake lines. I've got a couple bushings. 
and some brakes. Man, I really wish I was smart and would have put all my parts in the car. I had turbo intercool piping. I think I had a bigger intercooler. Fuel pump. Ugh. Yeah, the list goes on. It was kind of all sitting in the corner. I had header wrap. I had, oh man. Bummer. <laughs> Ooh, turn that light off. There was so much stuff in there. Uh, oh well. Anyways, I think the, uh, the game plan going forward here, we're going to make a list of what I think I got to order. Seeing how this Camaro diff, mind you, I might have some stuff in the shed. I usually always keep a lot of Camaro S10 stuff in there. So I probably have wheel cylinders and stuff like that. Definitely one of a posse. I'm guaranteeing it's going to have like 273 gears, something like that. Which really, right now, is not a big deal just to make it mobile. I have to figure out my turbos, what I want to do there. Now, let me put this down here. Um. I was going to use like my injectors and everything, but I'm missing all of that stuff now. So I'm going to have to, I don't even have my injector tester. I used to have, I used to have a tester for testing injectors. Uh, you put them in and you can do, do your thing, but uh, that's not the case anymore. <laughs> <ever. laughs> so I don't know if I'm just going to do this thing all right and we'll get some those decas or whatever they are just 80 pound injectors i don't think i'm doing much we're going to be not very high boost i don't think i'm thinking like 10 to 14 pounds maybe kind of probably maybe even slower like seven depends what this thing will do if it'll fry tires at like 40 miles an hour i'll be pretty happy i don't need to do it any faster than that oh somewhere where oh where it's not in here oh man dang it I had a brand new windshield in the shop golly that sucks I was trying to think where I put that and it would have been upstairs on the mezzanine man that sucks hmm oh, that's such a bummer golly all right, so I guess I'm looking for a windshield again. Dang it. Oh well. Oh well. Okay, so back at this. We're gonna have to adapt their power steering hoses, do a twin turbo, need a different intercooler. I found some intercooling pipe at the swap meet. So that's pretty big though, three inch, which is probably what I should do anyways. Uh, I need an intake. Man, I need like lots. A wiring harness for the car. Some lights. I don't know if I have the signals. I think they're in the back seat. I don't even know if this clip's bolted on. Looks like it's not. Not really. Okay. Well, let's worry about parts. <laughs> let's worry about trying to make it run and drive first. Oh, man. All right. I'm babbling. I'm going to start making a list. And I'll let you guys see what I, what I come up with here. I haven't actually made a list yet. All I have done is pulled the drums. I was checking the backs of the shocks. They're actually feel okay. Just don't have any mounts for them. But we're gonna need rear hoses. Well, rear hose. Yeah, that one feels okay too. Emergency brake cables. I have some in the shed. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna check for wheel cylinders and some stuff there. We definitely have an open diff which tells me it's probably gonna have some really crappy gears. Oh, which actually, I bet you if I steal the gears out of this thing, 
I'm going to bet you money these are going to be 308s or 273s. I got 373s in my my T, and I'm not enjoying that. I want to make that car more highway friendly like it used to be when I first built it. So I might steal, well, we don't know yet for sure. Well, I guess I could drop the cover and check what we got for gears in here. Should do that. We'll drain that, check the gears there. Up in the front, I realized we still got more welding and stuff to do because we made this plate up here. I don't know if I was gonna box it all because it's actually welded under here. It's welded here, it's welded to this. Uh, this side is welded on the inside, but I haven't actually made this gusset yet. And then we'll have to figure out the shocks, which I think are just going to end up probably coming off the front here. And I'm going to make a mount, I guess. Unless I do something up here, I don't know for sure yet. I mean, this this is there and it works. I just got to figure out how to make, I guess in the car it went into the body, right? So we got to do that. I have a little bit of a struggle. I got to figure this out because I guess the Jaguars, they do uh, like this style of a fitting. But I don't know how to make this go to like normal, normal flare. So I don't know. If anybody out there knows, let me know. I haven't looked at any researching yet. I just know I got the hoses for here. Unless I can change the fittings on these. I don't know though. I really don't know. Because what we got is, I guess it's a pretty zany caliper on here, eh? What is that thing? Like a four piston? Boy, that thing's gonna stop pretty good, eh? <laughs> Judging by here, I don't know if these are bad or I think just the boots are bad. But we'll have to check that, make sure the rack is good. Uh, I have some random brake line. It's for the 58 or 59 pickup, but I got enough there to do probably both cars. I should pick up some fuel line because we're gonna do an LS, which reminds me, well, I guess what I'm gonna do now is I'll pull the diff cover, we're gonna check the gears. I'm gonna pull this fuel tank out, see what I can do. If there's, like it looks like there's something, maybe something has been in it, as in fuel, I don't know. Uh, I should pick a little straps first. Look at those things, just rusty, rusty. We'll pick our battle, see which ones come off. I'll probably snip that line. I'm thinking what we're gonna do is if we do this, maybe do an in-tank pump. I don't know. I really, it's not gonna be much of a sleeper if it's running around and you hear a fuel pump just wah, whining in the back, eh? I know folks have some complaints with these jacks, but they legitimately have a safety. The only problem with mine right now is I don't have, uh, uh, like there's supposed to be a cable on here to pull this back, but you can let the car down and it's got different locking points. Um, I did order some stands. I'm just gonna have one on either end. Kind of what I always used to do with my my hoist, just for dancing. I might, I don't know if we'll get four. Seems excessive for the space I'm in here. For this little, little bit. Although it lifts pretty high, like it lifts not bad. I don't know really how, if I wanna lift it right to the roof, but right here I'm standing beside it and it's, it's kinda, it's a good working height. <laughs> All right, uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna drop the oil out of the diff and possibly drop the fuel tank. There's only two bolts, that one line. There's probably a cable or like a cord, but that does not matter because we're gonna probably just uh, chop this thing up anyways. And I believe there is one screw in here that we gotta take out.
Well, I forgot to record this, but anyways, we popped this off. I know not even worth counting because uh, by the size of that pinion in there, this thing's probably like 273, 308, something like that. Usually on a 373, this gets thicker. There's less teeth on there, more teeth on here. Yeah, I don't know, probably says, but whatever. These are the gears I'm gonna wanna put in my T. I think that is the plan. Kind of made a bit of a mess, but fuel tank came out no problem. I am like really surprised how well everything unbolts. Actually, overall, this car is in really, really nice shape. Like, I don't know if you can see, but I don't have to do inner rockers. I don't have to do body boxes. This car is clean. Fuel tank even. I pulled the sender out. It's free. I haven't tested it yet. But, you know, you got the typical green sludge, so... I don't know that I'm going to cut it open. I might be in my best interest. Depending on what I want to do here for a pump and stuff. <clears throat> like, it doesn't smell like anything's going to burn, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah. Not sure where I'm going with this yet. I know I'm going to clean the tank and then we'll figure it out from there. Whether we're going to open it up, put a pump in. we got to build a sump, though. I've had a lot of idiot luck not doing stuff like that and that usually bites me in the arse so we'll have to build a little bit of a sump in the back so the fuel kind of pools especially if you're turboing something it's um, in someone's best interest to do that anywho i'm going to put that cover back on because i'm not touching that right now i want it to still be mobile so if i pull that the guts out this thing's going to be doa uh yeah, I don't know. I have done everything but make my list tonight, but, well, tomorrow's another day. Boy, that would have been a nice blue on this car, eh? Look at that. Golly, eh? Didn't notice that before. All right. Well, it's color night. You can always do more tomorrow. All righty. Well, I picked up some steel. That's some one inch round bar. Unfortunately, it is just the slightest hair too big that it doesn't fit into my dies, which kind of sucks. So, being that I don't have a lathe anymore, <laughs> I can't cut that down. Because I do have these ones, I have some of these ones from all my burnt up bead rollers. Was gonna try to make something, but I guess I could try to get a bushing, and then maybe I guess I just get solid blocks, which just really suck. Means I, well, means I wrecked my bead rollers for absolutely nothing. Well, I did and I didn't, but. Essentially, we got, I got this gear and somewhere else I should have the other gear. I don't know where it is, but I'll find it. Oh, it's in there. Bet you those don't even fit on there. Negative. <laughs> oh well, we'll figure it out. Anyways, yeah, we got the car up. I haven't done anything. It's been a day or two. I did get these jack stands, so we have those under there. So this thing's locked pretty good. I mean, there's some side to side wiggle, but I don't know, this car is pretty solid. So between the stands, I know there's only one or two of them, but it'll offset the difference if I start uh, lifting this thing up. Like if I shim this up just so I can kind of wiggle underneath there and do some transmission stuff, like try to get this motor and tranny level. But I'm not even worried about that right now. We're mostly, whoops. <laughs> We're mostly just uh, trying to do a parts run just to figure out what I got to order. I've ordered a bunch of stuff, but mostly engine, turbo, some things like that. Uh, I got some brake hardware. Uh, yeah, like stuff like that. Let's turn this fan off. I don't know if this is loud on film or not. I don't remember. I don't remember. <clears throat> Maybe Pablo's is really loud. So I haven't made too much of a list for the car itself yet. I'm not focused too much on the interior of it. I'm going to. Uh, I mean, I need. A, I need. Uh, I need a bunch of stuff. Alrighty, folks. I know a lot of you folks overthink. I guess you do. I don't know if you overthink. Everybody kind of overthinks things. 
I think uh, a lot of folks though, when they see a car project like this, they don't know really where to start or what to do. This is about where we're at with this one. I mean, this would be an awesome start just because we did a lot of work already to it. I kind of forgot everything that I did. But with that said, we know we need to get some brake parts. We know we got to do brake lines. We know we're missing a whole bunch of engine stuff. Uh, I have already started ordering because I'm going through it in my head, trying to think everything through. Um, so like some of this just makes sense and it's natural for me to try to pre-order and get stuff. I always try to be ahead of the game that when it comes time I'm working on it, I kind of doing this, 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 and I want to do electrical, I'll have a wiring harness already sitting on the shelf for it. It just makes it easier for me that I don't have to stop my whole project and wait for things. That said, there's always a million things to do. So if we were to the point here where, you know, the motor's in, but I'm missing the injectors, the fuel rail and things like that, like that shouldn't hold up this unless it's the only thing you have left to start the motor. I have, I can still hook up a throttle cable. You know, I can start plumbing the radiator. Like I can just keep moving on. Some people will, uh, I notice they hit a wall, like they'll see one obstacle and a lot of folks can't see past that obstacle. I, it happens. The easiest way to do that is just make a list. That's the way I see. So for this car in particular, what I have is I've already started a list. I've ordered a bunch of stuff, but I've just started a list. And essentially this list is everything you need to build this car in my head. Now things change and I usually add, take things off of there, but uh, engine trans, you know, like for example, I forgot to put uh, drive shaft, but no big deal. I don't feel like writing it in because it'll, it'll just come when the time comes. So I won't even worry about it. Anyways, if we look at my simple list here, we got, we got our chassis. Essentially, I got to finish welding the clip. I got to make shock mounts because we looked at that. We noticed there was no shock mounts. I don't remember what was done to the steering, so we got to go revisit that. Just check it, make sure it's good or not. At some point in here, we're going to have to make lines to go to the power steering pump. No big deal. Um, you know, in the engine department, I have no wiring. I'll have to find a wiring harness, injectors. We'll probably need some gaskets. I don't know which one. We know we have no transmission cross member and then eventually we'll have to do a shifter. We'll have to make some transmission lines to go to the, to the radiator or to a cooler. We, uh, when we were underneath there, you noticed I just spun the torque converter, so it's not bolted up yet. I have no engine mounts. We can always mount the rad in the intercooler, like we can do all that stuff. Uh, I still like thinking even further ahead, like the motor's working or not working yet. I have to do gauges. We have to hook up the gas pedal. There's still the whole turbo deal, which I don't know yet. So I'm kind of working that through. But then we go to the basic stuff, like, well, it's gonna need brakes and things like that. So, you know, my list would be like doing brake pads, the front brake lines, the rear, same thing. I'll have to do emergency brakes. Uh, we gotta like make, um, like somehow put a master cylinder and stuff in here. We'll have to bleed the brakes. Then we get to the fuel system. Let's just pretend the motor's in. Even if it's not, I can run the hoses up to the front and hang them by there, it'll be good, right? We gotta work on the fuel tank, add a filter, a pump. We gotta do like fuel lines, stuff we can do, not a big deal, right? Then we get into the electrical side of it, which you just break it down into whatever, like I gotta buy that wiring harness. When the day comes to do the wiring, then we'll have to wire the wiring harness, we'll have to string it out. We'll have to do the tail lights, the headlights, the front, like signal lights, you know, the engine wiring, blah, blah, blah. So we kind of have this list. From this list, we start making a shopping list. I've ordered some of these already, but I'm just using this as an example. So in the fuel system side, I don't have a fuel pump, so I need one of those. I will need lines to run from the fuel pump to the front. We're gonna need a filter in there. We'll need whatever fittings that we'll need, like stuff like that. For my brakes, I pretty much have everything I need on the shelf. So that part should be good, other than I need those adapters to go to that 37 degree flare that is the Jaguar, I believe. In the wiring department, uh, like I'm gonna need a wiring harness. We'll need some relays. I'll need some light plugs because we don't know if the sockets are good. So I'll just order some universal ones that I can put in there. Then I get over to random things, right? Because I don't have injectors for my motor or fuel rails or a throttle cable. I don't know what else I'm missing, but that's, it's like a starting point. Like some of this I can pre-think and just start ordering parts. And then whatever, if I fail this, you know, if I get my brake parts, but I realize I'm missing two or three things, but it's still early in the night and I want to work. I'll go to the engine and see what I can do there or 
or I'll make that shock mount, you know, I don't know. At least with the list, you have a manageable stuff in my eyes. And when it's said and done, you, if you can look at it, you look at stuff, find something easy and you can scratch it off and you'll feel pretty good about yourself at the end of the night. That's the way I see it. It doesn't have to be a, a nightmare trying to figure stuff out. Because as it goes, as you're working, you'll realize, oh crap, like this bearing seems bad. I'll just add it to the list because maybe I got to buy that or something. I don't know. Anyways, I know I've kind of rambled on with this, but that was kind of, I felt a, a need. I don't know if a need. Maybe it just gives me something to do. <laughs> I feel better explaining it out myself. Whether that makes sense to people or not, I don't know. Maybe, hopefully it helps people. Because if they look at the overall project, they they look at this, they wouldn't even know where to start. And I'm like, I don't know. Let's pull the wheels and see what you got for brakes right away. Maybe the brakes are good. We don't know. We'll start there. If those are good, we can work our way through that. If that's good, okay. Maybe we'll try the fuel system. Oh, well, that might work, might not. If it's a new car and you have the original motor, <clears throat> maybe we'll just try to start it. If it starts, great. Now we probably should look at brakes because we don't want to start driving it without some kind of brakes possibly on it, right? I think that's about where I'm at. I don't have too much more I can do to the car. I mean, I could do some work to it, but I really want to work on the 59 or 58, depending what year that truck really is. I'm pretty sure it's a 59. Um, and I think I'm kind of done and got my list started and I can start ordering some stuff. Again, I have ordered a bunch. I have a few more things to order, but I really want to work on that 59 first. And then we'll kind of haul this in between the kid's car and... You know, like Austin's working on his car and Ryder might be playing with his truck and yeah, stuff like that. So, but yeah, I'm going to push this one out. We're going to start ordering some stuff and, uh, well, this one will be back in a few weeks. I think I don't think that truck will take too long. It's a simple motor swap, do some brakes. The rust repair is kind of the crappy side of it, but it shouldn't be too bad. And I'm pretty sure I know I've ran this one. We just mooched parts off when Austin was working on that uh, that 50s Chevy. We stole a bunch of parts off of there for that thing. We should be able to mooch the parts off of this other truck because they were working fine. But uh, we did get parts in. I have ordered some stuff for Austin's car. We got some brakes. I've got some brakes for the 59. I'm pretty sure. I don't know which parts are which yet, but... So we've got a whole bunch of brake lines. We've got some wheel cylinders. More brake lines, more wheel cylinders. Uh, three sets of brake pads. So we should have all the brake pads for the, I'm guessing, are for that truck and this thing. Or his car. I don't know. I'll work through the list, I'll figure it out. But the Apache's coming back in. That's all I can tell you. <laughs>
right. Well, you've seen, we pushed this one out. Uh, this one can sit for a while till I order some parts. Not a big deal. We just have a bunch of random things around here that now we have to push in and out. I know Austin wants to come this week, one day after school, and uh, he wants to work on his car. So we'll try to make sure we got room to get that thing in and out. We might be shuffling. You probably already maybe seen, we got the 58 in the shop. Unfortunately, I, uh, well, you also seen that we were, a uh, rider was out and we were actually, or I was trying to straighten the, the English wheel. That seems not too bad. It's not terrible. At least everything looks like it lines up right now. The best I can tell. Maybe it's gotta go a wee bit more. I'm not 100% sure. Man, hope not. I guess I won't permanently mount this thing yet. I'm just trying to free stuff up. Nothing's really cooperating, so I'm just gonna have to uh, keep pickling it till I can get some stuff loose. I did pick up a tank, but I don't have the right bits because I usually just use propane, so I don't have the right bits to run the torch yet. I have to pick that up. Forgot to do that the other day. Yeah, a never ending deal. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll have to see how this goes because if I do hear this looks like it lines up right, these always have a little bit of play in them. But uh, it seems to be in the ballpark. Once I can get this loose, I can switch these out. A buddy gave me a set of dies, so at least I'd have one set of bearings. I don't usually use too many dies. I'm only like one or two. So he gave me a new upper and then like this one. This is a little much, but I can steal the bearings out of it. I could probably from here go ahead and uh, get the bearing numbers and we can just order a whole bunch of bearings for my other ones once I clean those up. But uh, yeah, so 58 is in. Ryder is out already, helped me a little bit. Uh, I keep calling it a 58. You know why? It's because there's a license plate that says 58. Everybody says it's a 59 and that's honestly probably what it is because they'd know better than me. Anyways, Ryder was by last night. We cleaned up some stuff in the front yard here a little bit. We still got more to go, but cleaned that up. He started scraping, cleaning this. Um, Tomorrow I'll grab some paint. I want to keep scrubbing, cleaning. I don't have a pressure washer. So I'm pretty much just going to wire brush it, do whatever I can, as good as we can. We'll slap some paint on it. I don't really know that I care. Like the original motor didn't even look like it had much of anything on it. Well, I guess this isn't original, but I don't know. I'd like to doll it up a little bit. Man, it's just too much work to bring and wash to take it out. Ah, we'll see what we can do. I'll buy some paint. Maybe I can doll it up. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's not think too much about it. <laughs> Anyways, folks, I think this is where we're going to leave this one. I uh, want to thank you all for uh, watching, sticking around. Hopefully next video, I'll get an English wheel fixed, some paint on it. We'll figure something out. Time will tell. Um, but next round, for sure, we're going to be doing a bunch of 58 stuff and uh, possibly doing some brakes and stuff on Austin's uh, Buick. So anyways, as always, I wanna thank you all for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next one, later.